Hello and welcome. I'm Ben Buss, Youth and Family Ministry Coordinator at Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Columbus, Ohio. I'm so glad that we have this time together. Later in this video, we're going to be doing a prayer activity using a finger labyrinth. I'm going to suggest that you not use the one that was included in the activity kit you might have picked up from Gethsemane, because this ends up being a maze with wrong turns and dead ends, and that's not what we want for this activity. Instead, see the video description for a link to download and print your own finger labyrinth that looks like this. You can set that aside for now. In our last video, we learned about Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and people waved their palms and cheered for Jesus. But some religious leaders weren't very happy about it. The Thursday of that week is called Holy Thursday or Maundy Thursday. Now, Maundy isn't a word that I hear very often. It means command. And we call it that because Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment at dinner that Thursday to love one another as Jesus has loved you. A lot happened at that dinner, and we're only going to be able to talk about a little bit of it in this video. If you'd like to learn more about that dinner of Jesus and his disciples, you can come to our agape meal tonight at Gethsemane or use the link in the video description to register for our in-person Holy Communion workshop that will be held on Sunday, April 30th. We would love to see you there if you can make it. The colors we associate with Monday Thursday are white for rejoicing and celebrating the Lord's Supper, or scarlet for the blood of Jesus. At the end of Monday Thursday, we aren't rejoicing anymore and everything gets stripped from the altar and there's no color associated with that. Why aren't we rejoicing at the end of Monday Thursday? Let's find out in our story from our rural story Bible, which starts during that dinner of Jesus and his disciples. Deserted by all. Jesus looked at each of his disciples. You will all desert me, he said. Matthew looked at Peter. Peter looked at James. James turned to look at Judas, but Judas wasn't there. Where did Judas go? Everyone looked at Jesus. I would never desert you, Peter said. Yes, you will, Jesus sighed. Jesus led the disciples to a garden called Gethsemane. Wait, that name sounds familiar. Oh yeah, that's the name of our congregation. Jesus led the disciples to a garden called Gethsemane. The disciples sat on the soft grass in the dark night, and they felt drowsy. Stay here, Jesus said to them. I am going to pray. Stay awake while I am gone and wait for me. Where do you pray? Take a moment to discuss this with those around you. You can pause the video and I'll wait and be here when you get back. Continuing with our story, Jesus had just walked away to pray and asked the disciples to stay awake and wait for him. Jesus walked farther into the garden. He fell to the ground. Father, Jesus prayed, if it is possible, please don't let me suffer, but I will do what must be done. When Jesus returned, all the disciples were asleep. Jesus shook them awake. Couldn't you stay awake with me? Just then, Judas and a crowd of soldiers arrived in the garden. Judas whispered his plan to the soldiers. I will kiss the one you want. He walked up to Jesus and kissed him. The soldiers arrested Jesus. The disciples gasped in fear. <gasps> Jesus was in trouble. But what if the soldiers arrested them too? They ran away from the garden. Jesus' disciples all deserted him. Here are some more questions that you can discuss with those around you. Is it always easy to stand up for your friends or other people? Have you ever felt deserted? When you feel alone, 
Is there anything that comforts you? Take some time to pause the video and discuss. I hope you had a good discussion. Now it's time for our prayer activity. In the story that we heard, after Jesus shared a meal with his friends, he was feeling worried about what was coming next. Even though Jesus knew what was going to happen, he may have felt a little lost about what path he should follow. So Jesus took his friends to the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus spent time in prayer. Jesus trusted God to help him find his way when he was nervous about what was going to happen next. And when Jesus needed God to direct his ways, he went to God in prayer. Sometimes we feel lost or unsure of what to do next. I know I do. A finger labyrinth is a way that we can pray to God to ask for help in being ready for whatever comes next. Jesus prayed that God's will be done, not his own. We can have an idea of what we want to happen, but there are times that God knows there's something better for us. Trace the path of the labyrinth with your finger. Don't worry, you can't get lost. This isn't a maze, which would have dead ends and choices about which way to go. Instead, this labyrinth has one path, and if you follow the path, you'll reach the center. When you get to the center, ask God to help you with something that you're struggling with anything you're struggling with. Share with God your worries and rest there in the center if you need to. And then when you're ready, trace your way back out of the labyrinth. When you get done tracing the path out, close your prayer by saying, your will, not mine, be done, God. I encourage you to keep your finger labyrinth. I have found labyrinths to be very helpful during times when I have a lot of different thoughts in my head. Following the path closer to the center, then farther, then closer, then farther until I reach the center, and then praying about what's on my mind in the center, and then following the path back out can help me calm my thoughts and make it easier to pray. It also reminds me that even though I sometimes feel closer or farther from God, really, God is always with me, and God is always with you, too. I hope to see you again tomorrow, and remember, God always loves you, and God is always with you.